Hello and welcome to our next topic. We are going to start this topic talking about DNA. Um, we're going to get into biotechnology and really cool ways that we've been manipulating DNA. But before we get into all the cool stuff, you have to understand the basics of what makes DNA DNA. So we've talked about DNA in a very sort of like out there sense. You've taken notes. You've actually written the word DNA in your notes before, but let's go back and talk about um, where you've seen this before. It is a macromolecule. It is under the umbrella term of nucleic acid. DNA actually stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, right? That's where the N and A of DNA comes from. The deoxyribo is actually the type of sugar that is in DNA, and so it's just an abbreviation of that really long word. As I mentioned, it is a nucleic acid, and the monomer of DNA is a nucleotide. So we've talked about DNA in a um, very brief sense when we are talking about macromolecules as a whole. And we really focused on the other three types of macromolecules, right, carbs, lipids, proteins, but this whole unit is going to be really focused in on nucleic acids and DNA in particular. Now, when I said that the monomer of DNA was a nucleotide, we're gonna go even further than that. You need to understand what actually makes a nucleotide a nucleotide. So it's made up of three specific parts and you do need to know all of these parts. You need to memorize these three parts and you should be able to draw a nucleotide, specifically this image. Um, it's pretty straightforward, you know, like circle, um, pentagon, and a rectangle. It's not like some really fancy, <laughs> like <laughs> you need to have an art degree to do it, but you should be able to draw it and label it. So the rectangle is a nitrogenous base or a nitrogen base. You might see it both ways. I'm probably going to refer to it as a nitrogenous base throughout this presentation, but you might see it somewhere um, as a nitrogen base somewhere else. The pentagon is a pentose sugar. That means that there are five carbons, right? The prefix pent means five, like pentagon, um, I don't know, pentagram, <laughs> other words that start with pent. Um, it all has five, right? Like the building, the pentagon, is shaped like this, like this pink um, pentagon right here. Um, so this is the sugar in DNA, right? That sugar is deoxyribose. Um, there's another form of nucleic acids called RNA, and that's made up of ribose. And then the last thing, this little yellow circle, is a phosphate group. There are different types of nitrogenous bases. You will have to understand the four of them. So there's adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. And I know those are like crazy words and you've probably never seen them before, but what's great about them is we actually almost never refer to them as their full names. We just abbreviate them with their first letter. So A, G, C, and T. And we pretty much only ever call them by their first letter because the whole word is just a lot. Now, you're gonna see these two words, purines and pyrimidines, um, in some of the pictures. And realistically, you don't need to know a whole lot about them. All you need to know is that purines are made up of two rings, right? Two carbon rings, right? There's two rings um, on adenine and guanine, and pyrimidines only have one ring, right? Only one. So other than that, I don't need you to know anything more than that, but you're gonna see those words and I didn't want you to be confused on what those terms meant because um, they show up all the time on DNA images. Now the structure of DNA is kind of like a ladder. If you turn your head sideways, you can kind of see that like right here, the A's and the T's connected and the G's and the C's connected kind of make up the steps to a ladder. And then on both sides or the ends of them is sort of like where you would put your hands to climb up the ladder. And the sugars and phosphates are what makes up that outside portion of the DNA, right? The sugars are the blue pieces here. And then the phosphates are the greens. And that makes up the outer ends on both sides of the DNA. 
and that's called the backbone. So sugars and phosphates make up the backbone of DNA, and then the nitrogenous bases make up the inside or like the rungs of the ladder. When you put DNA together, and as I mentioned on the previous slide, it sort of looks like a ladder, it actually is called a double helix. And the reason that it's called that is because of the way that it twists and turns. Um, so this like white part that's going, it almost looks like a ribbon going around the outside, that's the sugar phosphate backbone. And then like the red parts and the blue parts inside, those are the nitrogenous bases. And those are like the rungs of the ladder and it's all twisted up and it's called a double helix. So it looks like a twisted up ladder, but we call that a double helix. You absolutely should write that down. Okay, let's talk base pairing rules. This is like one of the last things that we're gonna talk about in this um, set of notes um, in regards to the basics of DNA. So when we are setting up DNA and we're looking at the way that they uh, come together to form that double helix, there are very specific rules. They're called pairing rules or and they deal with complementary base pairs. And with these rules, DNA will only follow these rules, okay? So in the bold, all capital letters, those are the rules that you need to know. These are mega super important. Please, please, please write this down. Um, in DNA, A will always bond with a T, right? A will always bond with a T, and G will always bond with a C, so G to C. And if you notice, it's always a purine that will bond with the pyrimidine, right? So it will always make up the, the two rings plus the one ring, okay? A will never bond with G, and T will never bond with C. It will always bond A to T and G to C. Now what keeps them together? Hydrogen bonds, <laughs> yep, they're back. They're in everything. We've talked about them with water. Um, they were like super important for water to have all the properties that they have. And they're super important in DNA too to keep those base pairs together. They are weak though. They're, they can be broken. Um, and we'll learn about why they need to be broken in the next set of notes, but the, the, the key here is that hydrogen bonds are what keeps DNA together, and there are three bonds between C and G, and there are two bonds between A and T. So there are a different number of bonds between the two sets of base pairs. Now, the vocab in this, um, there's not a lot. We've talked about some of this before, but I'm just kind of bringing it back to your attention that you're going to see these terms throughout um, this unit and the next unit. And so chromosomes, right, condensed, coiled, visible strands of DNA. Chromatin is that thin and long strands of DNA. It, you can't really see it. It's really only an interphase. And then a gene. Now a gene is a small section of nitrogen bases. So like A's, T's, C's, and G's, maybe like 10 or 20 um, in a row. And they code for a single protein. And those proteins are what give you your unique, like physical traits, mental traits, all of that, right? It gives me uh, my hair color, my eye color. Genes are responsible for um, making proteins. And then the last thing is like kind of big picture, wrap it all up. So DNA is responsible for all of your genetic information. It's so important. DNA codes for everything that makes up your body. And the sequence of bases, right, the A's, the C's, the T's, and the G's, determine what genes you have. So all organisms, all living things on Earth, uh, have the same four bases, have the same A, C's, T's, and G's. But the sequence of those bases actually determines what the differences are. Right, like, so humans, in comparison to other humans, are 99.9% .9 pretty much the same, right? Humans pretty much all look similar, right? Um, we have two arms, two legs. 
typically we all look in a general sense similar but even with other organisms on earth like dogs have a fairly high similarity um, in the genes we share even wine grapes 24 percent that's a quarter and it's a plant right so we all share the same four bases but it's all about the order of the bases that determines how different organisms look from each other all right great job we'll go over more of this in class and i'll see you next time